Young girl's clothes are slowly removed, and she shows a look of infatuation. A Chinese man and a French girl begin a subtle affair in a dimly lit room. La girl, with her crocheted hair, uneven lipstick, and white hat, strides feet casually over the parapet. Her cute, flirty behavior attracted the richest man in the city. The girl's name was Jane, a French national from the Vietnamese colonies. She attended a boarding school. One day, she took the ferry back to school as usual. Her quiet nature, out of place in the hustle and bustle, attracted a man who was also on the ferry. The man's name is Tony, the only son of a wealthy local Chinese family, and he falls in love with Jane at first sight. He went up to the girl and hit on her. She gave him a cold look and didn't pay him any attention. Tony continued to talk to her. When he mentions where he lives, Jane immediately realizes that his family lives in a rich neighborhood and she starts to pay attention to him. Jane's family was very poor and her mother raised many children on her own. Jane's two older brothers, who were mean, often bullied her. Jane wanted to find a rich man so that she could make a better living. Tony asked the girl to get in the car and Jane agreed. As they sat her day in the small car, their relationship grew. Tony couldn't help but touch Jane with his hand. He stroked the girl's hand gently. And Jane didn't refuse. They didn't speak later, until the car dropped Jane off at school. When she pulled her hand out and ran out of the car, Jane had a good friend at the boarding school. One night, her friend told her that a lot of girls at the school were seeking out to work as prostitutes and that they could make a lot of money. Jane suddenly remembered her last encounter with a Chinese man who was also rich. She imagined what it would be like to be his lover. One day, she found Tony's car waiting for her in front of the school, and she decided to get in. She got into the car and drove through the streets to Tony's place. This is where rich Chinese men often come to cheat on their husbands. Jane surveys the gray room and asks the man if he has many lovers here. Tony sees Jane as an unsullied, innocent girl, but Jane says she wants to be his lover. No man can resist a beautiful, active girl. He slowly took off his shirt and carried her to the bed. Jane undressed him and they made out in the darkened room. The sunlight poured in through the window. The room didn't seem so lonely with the girl in it. A leather ball slammed hard into the girl's arm, and instead of apologizing, the kids said the girl was too dirty and they needed to stay away from her. And the girl didn't care what they said. She spent every day with Tony, and the school called him a whore, but she didn't take it personally. Since Jane became Tony's lover, she was taken to his place as soon as school was over. The two of them made out in the small room, as if they were just a couple. Jane's body was young and vibrant, while Tony's health was poor due to his opium addiction. He doesn't have a proper job, so he's mentally unsupported, just like his dark room, where even the plants can't survive. Jane's presence illuminated his dark heart, and even the plants in the room began to grow. Jane gradually became more and more important to him, but Tony's family had already arranged a fiancé for him, so Jane could only be a lover, never a wife. For Jane, she only saw the man in front of her as a tool to get money. One day, Tony took Jane to a restaurant for dinner. Jane asks if in Chinese tradition, men will marry women like her. Tony said that traditionally Chinese women don't have sex before marriage. So the moment Jane chose to be his lover, there was no chance of her marrying a Chinese man. Jane was silent for a moment when she heard that, but immediately returned to smiling again. She laughed and said she didn't like Chinese men either. But when she went back to the dormitory at night, she was alone and silently shedding tears. One day, Jane took Tony's car to go home to visit her mother. The appearance of a high-class car in the slums caused a commotion. When her mother asked her who owned the car, Jane lead and said she was just a friend. The mother looked at her absenteeism chart. She didn't believe her daughter. She decides to take the family to meet the friend. Tony takes Jane's family to an upscale restaurant where his polite hospitality is not appreciated by the family. Jane's family didn't say a word at the dinner table. After the meal, Jane's eldest brother verbally abused him, and he almost fought with Tony. The second brother danced intimately with Jane. He ran his hand up and down Jane's back, and the two of them pressed together. All these made Tony angry. He didn't know when he had fallen in love with this French girl. Maybe it was the first time they met, or maybe it was the days they spent together. Jane became his lover and rekindled his hope in life. Before he met Jane, he had never known pain because no woman could make him fall in love with her. Now he couldn't bear the thought of her having any contact with other men. He took Jane to his home, where he roughly slapped her and slammed her on the bed, pulling down her pants and forcing her to satisfy his need. Girl crosses her long, thin, white legs and asks the man how much a woman like her is worth. 
Tony sees that she doesn't show any emotion. She only sees their relationship as a transaction. He was so angry that he pulled out a few hundred and slammed it aside. He hated Jane for treating him like a whore. He hated Jane for not loving him. But he hated himself even more for falling in love with such a Jane. Love may be like this, full of human complexity and contradictions. He went home and told his father he wanted to marry Jane. Unfortunately, he knew it was futile. In traditional Chinese families, marriages are arranged by parents. Besides, he was a playboy who had no job and depended on his father's money. He couldn't afford to confront his father. His father wanted him to marry the woman he had arranged. That day, he talked to Jane about their doomed separation. He expressed his intense love for Jane, but Jane still seemed indifferent. She said she was only with Tony for the money, and that she wouldn't have fallen in love with him without it. The two of them look at the large withered farmland in front of them. The thin girl shivering in the cold wind, Tony took off his suit and draped it over the girl. They stopped talking, and the silence was filled with despair for the future. Jane didn't come to see Tony for a long time, and that was the last time they saw each other. One night in the pouring rain, Jane re-entered the room and Tony was as dead as ever. He was in a corner, shaking and smoking opium, and he had lost a lot of weight. Tony lies on the floor and confesses his agonizing love for Jane, who does not reciprocate his feelings. On Tony's wedding day, Jane, dressed in black, sat her day in the center of the crowd. She looked cold and emotionless, but her eyes searched for Tony's figure. Her heart was full of fear and anxiety. Their love will never come to fruition. But they can't forget each other, and the pain in their hearts haunts them. Soon it was Jane's day to return to France, and she leaned on the railings and looked at the embankment just as she had done at the beginning. She looked around for her lover until she saw the familiar car at a corner. Jane's feelings began to rise. Tony must be in the car looking at her right now. It was then that the girl realized that she had always loved Tony because of the difference in their status. This love was never fruitful from the beginning. So deep down, she never dared to admit a love. She told herself constantly that they were only together because of the money. But such self-deception had all come to naught at this moment. She stared at the car until the whole land disappeared in front of her eyes. Jane and Tony's love is not so much lust as the maintenance of their self-esteem. They were afraid that their existence was meaningless, but they felt that the love of others was emotionless. So they chose to find and record their emotion from another's painfully entangled life despite the harshness of reality. Love is seared into their souls, 